Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to look at atmospheric science and meteorology and look at how air is lifted from the Earth's surface to higher altitudes. And this will cause the air to generally cool down through adiabatic cooling and form condensation, clouds, weather systems, fronts, storms, extreme weather, you name it. So this is how air is lifted. This is the Earth Science Classroom. For both atmospheric science and meteorology, the study of air that's being lifted is paramount and invaluable in regards to how clouds form, condensation, different types of airbag lapse rates, and the environmental lapse rate, and how air that contains water vapor is going to cool down and condense and form various cloud patterns, cloud types at different altitudes and create these amazing weather patterns we see around our planet. Now, generally, the atmosphere is going to react to solar radiation and the absorption of energy in a budget between the clouds, the atmosphere, albedo, and what is absorbed by the surface. And then you have the conduction and convection and advection of this thermal energy being transferred around the environment, around the atmosphere, and how heat is moved and distributed from the equator towards the poles and the movement of heat or lack of heat back from the poles towards the equator. So air in general is going to be lifted by the absorption and transfer and conduction of thermal energy. However, if there is no apparent thermal energy there are other ways in which air can be lifted and this video is going to discuss all four types of processes or mechanisms that can lift air the first type or mechanism or process that's going to lift air from the surface towards the upper atmosphere to higher altitudes within the troposphere is going to be convectional lifting. Now, convectional refers to the transfer of heat, thermal energy, through solar radiation and the absorption of radiation by the Earth's surface, either terrestrial surface or aquatic oceanic surface. And the transfer of heat into the layer of the atmosphere, the air, that's going to touch the surface and conduction will occur and then thus heating the air parcel above the surface causing it to rise through buoyancy and density and the energy within the air molecules. So this will create a low pressure environment at the surface where air is being lifted and this would bring in wind from either side of the area that's being heated to replace the air that's rising and moving upward. And this can happen around the equator, around the tropics, the ITCZ, and can occur anywhere where the surface is heated and thermal energy is transferred to the air. And this mechanism can also create thunderstorms and with the heat plus the addition of water vapor and moisture in the air, you're going to get a lot of potential severe weather, thunderstorm development, vertical cloud formation and natural phenomena like thunder, lightning. Mechanism or process number two is called orographic lifting. Now, orographic or orogeny refers to large high elevation mountain ranges. So the Earth's surface is mountainous, higher elevation above sea level, and this is causing a natural barrier for any prevailing wind or air that is approaching and going to basically slam into this large mountain range. Now, obviously, the air cannot pass through the mountain and is forced to go up. Now, it can't go down either through the Earth's surface, so the air has a simple task of going over this mountain range and the air is forcibly lifted and any water vapor that will be contained in this wind on the windward side of this mountain range would be lifted up and cooled down adiabatically to the LCL and the dew point and this would cause condensation to occur with 
relative humidity and saturation get into 100%, and you'd have a precip event on the windward side of this mountain range. And again, it depends on the elevation of this mountain range and the size of it, but you will get this change in lapse rate from dry to saturated, but you'll have an absence of water vapor going over the top or peak or summit of this mountain range. And on the leeward side where the wind comes down, it will be noticeably drier and contain less water vapor. And with the air descending, it's going to reheat from being higher up and colder and denser going over the mountain to descending and sinking down and creating what's called a rain shadow on the leeward side of this mountain range because of the lack of water vapor and the ability for descending air that's going to heat up to not condense and form clouds. So you have this distinct difference in precip and mechanism that happens on either side of this mountain range. And there are many examples of classic rain shadows behind mountain ranges, both in North America, in South America with the Atacama Desert, in Asia with the Gobi Desert. The third mechanism or third process that is going to cause air to be lifted or forcibly risen up to higher altitude, creating a low pressure system at the surface is convergence. Now convergence refers to the wind meeting in one point and the prevailing wind on both sides are going to meet and move towards each other and cause a situation where the only possible avenue or direction to go for this wind that is converging on a single location is up. So this area on the Earth's surface is going to experience low pressure and rising air due to wind that is converging on a certain location and forcing the air to rise to higher altitudes. So therefore, making it cool down and form the clouds, condensation, and weather that we all like to see. Now, this happens in certain areas of the world. Now, in terms of, in terms of GCM, around 60 degrees north and south of the planet, in terms of latitude, you're going to have convergent air masses between the polar cell and the feral cell, and how these surface winds around this latitude is going to converge and force the air to rise. The final mechanism or process number four of how air rises is called frontal lifting. Now this is a more detailed and more common way of air being lifted across a much larger area, both with convergence, convectional and orographic. They're in certain locations, whereas this is going to occur in majority of the mid latitudes between 30 and 60 degrees north and south. So a much larger geographic area this can occur in, which is going to cause air to rise and form weather systems all across the planet within this range of latitude. Now, frontal lifting refers to a front, which is the leading edge of an air mass. An air mass is air that has the same characteristics or uniform characteristics of both water vapor, temperature, and obviously moisture. Now, this is a cold front, which means that the cold air is coming into the location where there is currently a warm air mass. So there's a mixture or a combination or a coming together of different temperatures of air. Now, cold air, which is usually denser and carries less space and less water vapor, is going to come in and it's usually a faster moving air mass. It's going to come in and it's going to displace and knock out the warm air mass and it's going to force the warm air, which is lighter, less dense, and generally contains more space for water vapor and moisture, is going to be pushed up away from this incoming cold front. Think of it like a, a train and things just being pushed out of the way of the train or a large battering ram that's going to push away the warm air and force the warm air to rise quickly over this approaching fast cold front. This is also responsible for thunderstorm development and vertical cloud development. And this is what the cold front looks like if you're looking from an aerial perspective or a map perspective where you have these blue triangles represent the cold front and the direction of the arrows and the pointing direction of the arrows is giving you an idea of the 
direction and movement of the cold front and geographically what's going to happen in both the warm air section and the cold front section cold air section in terms of temperature pressure wind direction and also cloud types and cloud formation and at different altitudes then we have the opposite situation whereby you have this situated cold air mass over this location and then slowly this warmer air this warm front is going to come in and slowly force the warm air to go up and because the cold air is denser and it's going to stay closer to the surface even though the warm front is coming in this area it will be gradually forced upwards over a lesser gradient so it's less steep and not as quick to rise compared to the cold front so this warm front is going to create different types of clouds and different kinds of precip compared to the cold front and also the change in air direction and pressure and here you have the aerial or map view perspective of the warm front approaching with the in situ cold air mass and the red circles or half circles or semicircles are going to indicate the presence of a warm front and the direction based on the direction of the circles in which they point and again this can tell you the different pressure temperature and changes that will happen over the course of the next few hours as this warm front passes over the location in terms of cloud type cloud altitude and height and the change in weather patterns as this warm front approaches, passes, and moves over to a new location. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like it, please subscribe and hit the like button. If you like more on this content, please check out my channel, which has all these videos on Earth science.